Hi guys, Adam Steele here and it's Reaper time again with the Promix Academy. Uh, the ultimate guide to Reaper is available in the description below, which is me taking you through all the steps for using Reaper as its own thing and being able to load external plugins and all that kind of stuff. Today, we're going to be talking about some free external plugins that you can get that work with Reaper from a company called Toucan Studios. Uh, it's a one-man operation and it's stuff that is really cool. The one plugin that I'm going to focus on today is one that was designed for me. <laughs> And it means that I can have on my screen kind of classic VU meters laid out like a classic analog meter bridge. So I can see analog style levels on up to 24 tracks all at once. And it doesn't take up a massive amount of real estate on screen unless I want it to. So I'm going to show you that right now. So this is console meter and this was designed by Toucan Studios at my suggestion which I'm incredibly grateful for and if I hit play you'll see that it's fully featured and I'll talk you through what it does and later on I'll talk you through how to install it. It is completely free so I'll talk you through that later. So a few things you'll have seen there is that these are all traditional style VU meters. I have them calibrated to plus four dBU, which is the same as a lot of analog consoles are uh, calibrated to. And they've got these warning lights, which flash when you get to minus three dBFS, but that can be changed. Uh, they've all been named as channels and colored, which again, all customizable. I've currently got 16 of these VUs up, but you can have up to 24. You can have them as a single row or as two rows. There's just so much configurability. If you like to work with this a certain way that's slightly different to how I like it, there you go. And it's relatively simple to set up, takes a couple of minutes, but I'll be doing a project template that you guys can open up and we'll link that down in the description below and that will help you to do this much quicker and have everything ready to go. So the plugin console meter itself can drop on any channel uh, because the way that it works, it doesn't actually take any sound or process any sound. This is just a metering system. So it's completely transparent. I've got this on my uh, monitoring effects channel which is something you can do in Reaper if you've not seen that before, where it goes after the master bus. So you can put things like Slate's VSX or uh, Sonarwork Sound ID or anything like this on there. And this will just pass through. And that means that that's now on any project that I like because monitoring effects is persistent across projects. And that's the thing with the uh, project template that I'm going to make is that I'll put that on the master bus, but you could put that absolutely any way you like and it will provide exactly the same functionality. Uh, I've got this open and set how I like it and then once it's ready uh, I've then gone to that channel and right clicked in the effects window and gone down to dock effects window in docker. You don't have to do this but that's how I have this fixed at the top here. You see there's a little tab that says fx monitoring. I can drag that around and have that pretty much anywhere on screen so you'll see if I put it down, drag it down to where there's a little blue bit here, I can have it next to the, the mixer, or I could have it on the same space as the mixer where I can just tab between the two of them. So the way it works is that you have your console meter wherever you like it, wherever you can see it. You don't have to have it permanently open, but that's how I have it. And then to get these meters to move, there's a second plugin that comes with it called C meter send. And so as a good example, I've got CME to send on the kick drum, where if I just open that, there's a much smaller plugin that shows you that single VU and a list of uh, VU numbers. So I've got this assigned to number one, as you can see up here. And so whenever I hit play, this meter here will match the one up on the bridge. If for some reason you want this VU to be calibrated differently to the others, you can click these meter calibration buttons, but I leave it set by default at minus 20 dBFS as the 
zero point. So where that red begins, that's exactly at uh, minus 20 dBFS or plus four dBU, depending on how you have it calibrated. In the options here, you'll see in the channels, I can have eight, 12, 16, or 24 channels. I've currently got it on 16. If I hit 24, they will move around and be slightly smaller to fill that space. Uh, so for this particular project, 24 seems to be overkill, but you can do that. Uh, I have it in two row mode. If I have it on one row mode, you can see that they uh, fill up a single row instead, which then I could resize this window appropriately and take up less screen space if that's how you want to do it. Uh, you might maybe want to use eight or 12 uh, channels if you're doing it that way, but it does take up less screen real estate. There's also a stereo mode, which I have engaged. Uh, if a track is perfectly mono, then you'll see a black VU meter needle. But if it's stereo and the channels are different, you'll see a red meter as well. And that's red for right, which means if that's lower down than the black one, then left is louder. If it's higher up, then right is louder. You can see on the guitar and vocal groups there that those stereo meters were moving differently from each other, which is to be expected on those channels, but it's a really good tool so that if I'm expecting uh, a microphone or a pair of microphones to be uh, mono, but they're not, I can see it and go, hang on, something's wrong here. There's also this LED that's blinking and that's uh, set, like I said, at minus three dBFS. So it's almost clipping, but not, and that's a warning sign like, hey buddy, this is a little bit loud. Now, there's a couple of channels where I expect that. Uh, the drum group is a good example, but I do have a limiter here from Waves the L2 before C me to send, which means that that's uh, ceiling at zero dB which means that it's not actually clipping, but it's so close that the meter is designed to, to flash. And in that case, I'm expecting it, so that's fine. Same with the snare. Uh, because we're using floating point math here, the uh, snare group does go above zero dB quite often, but that's going into a drum bus, which then absorbs that and then the limiter. So again, I expect that. Interestingly, watch the kick and snare. These are two of the loudest elements in the mix, but watch how the needles don't even hit zero dB because uh, VU meters are relatively slow. They don't really catch the, uh, the big transient on the hit, which is very much like old analog meters. And so even though things like the vocals look louder on the meters, that's because they are constant sources. And so that, that's a really interesting thing about analog VU meters. They are not entirely truthful, but they are really useful to have as a good guide. Now, these are all named by me. Uh, it's a current limitation of Reaper, but where it says on the meters kick snare, if you right click on one of these, it gives you the option to rename it and you can click in there and call it whatever you like. I've also added these colors here, which correspond roughly to the color of the, the groups that I have down at the bottom, which means that at a glance, if I'm looking at several screens or hardware or the band, I can look back and very quickly go, right, those are my drum levels. Those are my guitar levels, bass levels. Without having to kind of scan the screen for each one, I can very quickly have my eye drawn to the right levels, which is a nice little extra feature that just saves that millisecond of time when you're trying to be efficient and trying to work with five different things. One last thing to note is that where you put this see me to send plugin has a very big bearing on the levels. So if say on the drums here, if the see me to send was before this virtual mix rack and waves L2, that would show me the level before that processing, which in my case, isn't what I want. I want to make sure that the, the meters are showing me after all the processing. Although if you want to see the meters, say you're tracking and you want to see those VU levels before any compression and all that kind of stuff that you're doing, you're treating like a separate mix stage, then go right ahead. That is a good way to do it. Now let's talk about how to get this installed because there are a few steps. It's a little bit of a kind of a mess around, but it's worth it uh, because it is free. So obviously install Reaper, that's a given. You're not going to do this in Reaper without Reaper. But beyond that, there is a thing called the SWS extensions. 
Now, I can't remember if the SWS extensions are completely needed for this, but I tend to have them installed anyway. They are free and it adds a lot of extra functionality in there, like the, uh, the Pro Tools style playlists that we talked about in a previous video. So you download the one that's relevant to your operating system, get that installed and go. And beyond that, we're going to need a thing called Repack, which is reapack.com. And this is a massive shortcut to some really wild stuff in Reaper. This is a package manager. If you've ever used anything like uh, any Linux package managers or the Mac OS app store, this is a very similar kind of thing where there then is a massive list of all the extra things that you can find and install in Reaper and that will single click, right click, install, do all that for you. So get that downloaded and installed. And that comes by default with a, a list of repositories, which are places that you can install stuff from. And then the Toucan uh, list is not included by default. That's the next thing we need to do. So if we go to extensions in Reaper, once we've installed those things, make sure you close Reaper and open it again to make sure that all comes up. There's now repack at the top of this extensions. Now, if we go to import repositories, then we get a list of all the repositories that come in Reaper by default. And there's an extra one in there, which is Toucan. So there's a couple others that I use. So the link here is in the description. So if I just post that, that's not the full link. There we go. So that is the repository. So if we hit OK, that is already in there by default on mine. So I think I've just imported it twice, which is very silly. And so now we can go back to repack and go to browse packages. Now, if we open browse packages, that gives us a huge list of everything that's available that we can add as extra shortcuts, synths, themes, plugins, anything that's on there. There's a huge list. And so how do you find anything? There is a filter at the top. And for Toucan, I'm going to type in T-U-K-A-N. And that, that shortens that list down to just the Toucan plugins. And as you can see on the left here, there are loads of little I's and I means installed. So I've got all these installed. And what I do is I just drag across all of them. I mean, the, the console meter is there, but I like this guy's plugins. Right click and there is install update selection and then hit OK and it will install them all for you. Done. And that's it. And then you've got all the other plugins you can play with there, all free, all available to you. And you can do what you like with those. But yeah, if there's any updates, then all you have to do is go back to extensions and repack and go synchronize packages. And that will lock on any of those plugins from repack and go, excuse me, Mr. Repository, is there a new version? And if it says yes, it gets the new version, installs it, sorts it all out for you. And so any bug fixes, any updates, they're all just done in one click of a button. Very, very useful. So that's that. And that's how you use console meter. So big thanks to Toucan Studios for making this. And thank you for collaborating with me to make this really cool tool. Thank you everybody for watching. And if you like this, there's lots more of this kind of stuff in the Ultimate Reaper Guide, which is down in the description. That's something that we've done with Promix Academy. So check that out. Thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.